Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is going back to liver cirrhosis. In our practice, we see a large number of patients with liver cirrhosis. The liver, as you know, is an organ that sits up on the right rib, under the right rib cage. Helps with many things. Helps with detoxifying the blood, makes bile, stores glucose, etc. When the liver is damaged and scarred, it tries to regenerate. And when it tries to regenerate, what forms is a mixture of scar tissue and regenerating nodules. That is what we call cirrhosis. Why is cirrhosis a, a, a thing? And what causes it? Common causes include chronic hepatitis C and B, alcohol, hemochromatosis, which is an iron problem, fat in the liver. All of these are common causes. And there are other causes that include auto, you know, where the body's own immune system turns against the liver, etc. But what I wanted to focus on today in addition to what it causes, how do we, what are the things that people who have cirrhosis need to focus on? When the liver gets scarred, it continues to function, but over a period of time, then the function of the liver starts going down. When the function of the liver starts going down, we see yellow jaundice, you will, people see fluid on the belly, so you can develop a pot-bellied appearance. There can be weight loss or weight gain. There can be some varicose veins that form in the throat, the kidneys start getting affected, sometimes the lungs start getting affected, there's fluid accumulation and sometimes there's mental confusion which is what we call encephalopathy and lastly cancer of the liver is a thing. So the management principles for dealing with liver cirrhosis are making sure that we can vaccinate patients with cirrhosis because Hepatitis B and C can happen in people who have cirrhosis, so you want to prevent further injury or insult. That will be quite a deal if one has cirrhosis and on top of that you get another infection. Avoiding hepatotoxins or things that are injurious to the liver. These are mostly in the categories of drugs such as NSAIDs, ibuprofen, naproxen, Aleve, Advil. Other drugs that are processed through the liver can sometimes be um, processed slower, so we need to think about that. So those are things to kind of watch out for, and of course, any kind of recreational drugs can also need, you know, can sometimes uh, affect the liver. So those things need to be thought about. So that's the avoid hepatotoxins. The other thing that uh, uh, we talked about uh, with the uh, liver is that, you know, there's a low sodium diet. There can be fluid accumulation in the liver. The fluid accumulation is because of various mechanisms that happen with liver disease, and, and patients tend to accumulate fluid, and that fluid goes into the belly, it goes into the legs, things like that. So a low sodium diet, in other words, not taking more than two grams of sodium uh, per day is helpful when one gets to that stage in liver disease. The uh, other complications that can happen sometimes, people get muzzle cramps and you, one needs to be, we need to watch and make sure that the water pills are not too much, the magnesium levels are not too much. Umbilical hernias where the belly button pops out because fluid in the belly can, needs to be observed for if there is an umbilical hernia, what we need to do is to try to make sure that the water is not accumulating in the belly and sometimes bowel can get stuck in the umbilical hernia. So if the umbilical hernia becomes red or tender or you can't push it, one can't push it back, that's a danger signal. With liver disease, then you can get bleeding complications, both because the varicose veins in the throat can become too big, so we watch for that. When they, we can grade them from a one to four, when they start getting beyond a two, we can start some medications that can shrink it down. If they get really big, despite medications, sometimes we start tying them off. That's how we prevent bleeding complications. The other thing that one needs to be aware is in liver disease, one can either form clots or they can bleed because it's kind of a paradoxical situation. Uh, it both can happen. So one needs to be somewhat aware that you, one can get a clot in the lungs or one can get a clot into the blood vessels flowing to the liver or if one has, is having any dental procedures or any surgical procedures, we need to make the surgeon aware that there is liver disease and there's a propensity to bleed. Along with the propensity to bleed, general infections can be more easily acquired. So one needs to be careful because you can consider that an immunodepressive state so our immunocompromised state rather. So infections such as COVID infections, such as gut infections, infections such as skin infections are more easily acquired. So one needs to be careful in terms of contact, in terms of washing, in terms of taking antibiotics, in terms of food chain preservation. All of these are important things to prevent those infections. The other complication 
of liver disease that can happen is uh, once you have cirrhosis, liver is more prone to developing cancer of the liver. That's why we do ultrasounds and a blood work called alpha free to protein every six months. These two things tend to pick up cancer at an earlier stage. And if you pick up cancer at an earlier stage, sometimes you can give do what's called radiofrequency ablation or chemoembolization to shrink the cancer. And sometimes if one is a liver transplant candidate, because of the uh, liver cancer developing, it bumps people up towards uh, on the higher towards the uh, liver transplant. And when one does a liver transplant in that setting, if the cancer has not spread, it becomes a curative operation uh, as well as a life-sustaining operation because one gets a new liver. So these are general principles of various things that can happen with liver disease and how we can manage them. So keep these in mind. Uh, if you have friends or loved ones that have liver disease or you yourself have liver disease, use these principles to educate yourself and keep thinking about it when you talk to us or your primary care provider.